Tata Passenger's electric mobility has achieved an incredible feat. 5 billion kilometers of electric vehicle driving data in just 5 years. All of that incredible data is going to help shape the future of electric mobility in India. In fact, to understand how all of this will help in shaping electric cars which will be smarter, more robust and have long-range capabilities, I'm going to be joined by Anand Kulkarni, the Chief Products Officer as well as the Head of HV Programs and Customer Service Startup Passengers Electric Mobility. Mr. Kulkarni, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18 as well as on Overdrive. Thank you. 5 billion kilometers driven across India. What are the key learnings and how is it going to be shaping Tata EV's plans for the future? It's uh, fantastic, uh, you know, uh, because uh, the 5 billion plus kilometers, in fact, the number's actually gone up, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's come on the back of uh, 200,000 cars uh, that we have done. When you look at customer insights, it means uh, it tells us uh, where are people driving, how long are they driving, what speeds are they driving, uh, what kind of uh, charging pattern, charging behaviors they have, where do they like to stop, mm. and things of this sort. When you look at the vehicle, it tells you a lot of things about how is the vehicle performing in different ambients, or what kind of uh, temperature graphs are you looking at, what kind of torque deliveries, mm. uh, what kind of speeds do you operate at and what does it mean for the vehicle. Right. Now, when you look at all of this data and when you start combining them, it puts you into a fantastic place to start predicting mm. how the use cases are going to be. And you use that to optimize further uh, improvements coming in. You use that to improve efficiencies. You use that to improve reliabilities or in summary, you get this whole lot of data and start to build an ecosystem of information and strategies that helps you build significantly better EVs and help you deliver to customer expectations much better. The data that has been collected from say the Nexon EVs in the past five years, yeah. how is that going to be used to make a very strong product in the future say for the Harrier EV? Uh, one of the early insights that we had was on the amount of regeneration mm. that you could have on the cars. And uh, you would know of all the energy consumption that happens on the car, on an electric car, the regeneration returns back between 25 and 30 percent of the energy. So it means if you have optimized your uh, regeneration in the best way, mm. then uh, it, it gives you a good amount of extra range in that sense. Right. Now, how do you optimize that? For example, you could make it very, very strong and you could have a start stop or a go, go uh, slow once and go fast again yeah. kind of a uh, uh, behavior yeah. which is not really conducive. Mm. You leave that uh, to be very free and you will find yourself touching your uh, brake pedal every often. Mm. So what we did was we were the first ones to start giving a multi regeneration uh, level mm. uh, uh, parameters. So customers are therefore able to visualize and mm. see what speeds they are operating at, how do they need to operate the car mm. and therefore optimize it accordingly. Mm. So you leave that in the hands of the customer. Mm. Now all of this came up on the basis of us having analyzed data of what speeds you are operating at, mm. how frequently is the brake operation happening and how much overrun through the primary brakes is there for the purpose of slowing down a car. Right. So it's a complex uh, assessment and that's one of the parameters that we've been able to optimize. Now when you go to Harrier EV for example, all of this information uh, is implicit right. and uh, it automatically becomes a part of our guidelines, it becomes a part of our routines and that helps us uh, optimize it further. Right. By the way, since you've asked me about uh, Harrier.EV, yeah. uh, the Harrier.EV is also going to be one of the first uh, EVs uh, made in India with uh, all-wheel drive. So it's going to have a front motor as well. Yeah. Now when you have a front motor yeah. uh, uh, and you have both motors trying to regenerate at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, there is a complex play of torque as well as uh, during drive as well as during braking hmm. and on top of it you have the primary brake system also being activated so it's a it's a very complex thing happening 
and our engineers have uh, optimized it to the best possible extent uh, to achieve blending so that we get the best stability, best drive performance and uh, the best range that you can extract out of that given configuration. Okay, and how uh, over time has uh, Tata EV worked on improving battery life? That's an interesting one because uh, battery life is again an uh, extremely complex uh, parameter. Mm. Uh, it's not a, a silver bullet that you do this and uh, it works fine. So it starts with choice of the right battery under the right conditions. So uh, lithium ion batteries, uh, I always say that they prefer to be operated in a Goldilocks zone. Mm. So for an Indian perspective, uh, we would like to maintain them at around uh, 30 35 degrees centigrade so that we uh, get the best optimal uh, life out of them right so the choice of the chemistry the choice of the thermal system so if you have to maintain these batteries at a optimal temperature you need a good thermal system mm. we've very consciously chosen that we all our batteries would be uh, liquid cooled okay and uh, what it means is uh, even in our harshest summers mm. and these days you know uh, with all the climate change Just things getting that hotter. it's getting hotter but even under these conditions and harsher our batteries are always operating at a very very comfortable temperature mm. now what that means is if you make these batteries comfortable the life improves mm. the second thing is also about the charging patterns so if you charge them very fast all mm. the time mm. then uh, uh, there is uh, there is an exothermic reaction during charging and discharging so you get a lot of heat during charging as well as discharging so while we have controlled tendency of the batteries to heat during discharging which is by the cooling during uh, fast charging also we make sure that we condition the batteries right and therefore batteries don't uh, heat up during fast charging as well that ability uh, significantly enhances the life of the batteries. So, in terms of the Tata chargers that are available today, uh, would you be able to give me a number as to how many private and how many uh, public chargers there are in the country? Uh, so, we do, uh, with every car that we sell, mm -hmm. uh, every personal car that we sell, we give a charger, which is a slow charger. Right. So, there are 1.5 lakh chargers, uh, charging points in the country that way. Now, Tata Power already has a setup of 18,000 charging points. Mm -hmm. acro spread across the country. Mm -hmm. The plan is to go to 400,000 chargers by 2027. Now, what it means is, even today, on all highways, on the major uh, highways which connect our uh, big cities, within 100 kilometers, there is a fast charger available. Okay. So, journeys on any of these highways is absolutely possible without having to worry about things. In the next three years, when the number of chargers go up from 18,000 today to 400,000, just imagine this is going to be a non-issue at all. But have you found any uh, belt today that still requires chargers which is lacking that the gap could be plugged? So the along the golden quadrilateral, yeah. uh, most of it is already plugged. Now we are trying to uh, go inside and uh, uh, there's a nice little map that we have on how cars are behaving and uh, it's it's spread out over the country and you see uh, with different years i mean a couple of years back you could see them only moving around in certain places right. and today you can see the entire country lit up excepting in some uh, uh, smaller places uh, which of course is not frequented so much by people but otherwise the entire country is now fully lit up okay thank you so much for spending time with us oh, and for this insightful interview Great. and congratulations once again and looking forward to the next vehicle which is Harrier EV for sure. Yes, uh, so we, we should be looking at that very soon but uh, thank you uh, for all the questions. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and I enjoyed uh, sort of uh, giving you insights on what we've been doing. I'm sure you would have enjoyed more in the driving seat. <laughs> <laughs> I could have, yes. <laughs> Than the but passenger. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> next time for sure. Mm-hmm.